The Anycubic Photon Mono Set. The Anycubic Photon M Set. The Anycubic M Set. The Anycubic Photon Mem. The Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro. Let's talk about it. Yeet. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank, and today we are talking about the Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro. What a name. We're just going to call it the Anycubic M7 or the this thing. This isn't important to the video. It's just, it was in the packaging and it's really cute. And I don't know where I'm going to put this. It's just going to live here forever now. He's, he's set dressing. Oh, also I saved this. I saved this for the video. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh-huh. Clip that. Anycubic sent me this new resin printer to test out and do a little review on. So thank you Anycubic for sending this to me. I'm really excited to actually utilize this thing. Now, I don't have a lot of resin printer videos on my channel because guys, they're kind of all a dime a dozen. You get what you pay for. You want a small resin printer for cheap? You can get a small resin printer for cheap and the money comes with the size and the features. And these have been advancing uh, concurrently with FDM plastic 3D printers pretty nicely, but they just kind of exist in their own space. And I like resin printers that just work out of box. In case you guys didn't know, you actually do need to level some resin printers. It used to be a much bigger problem. You would use a leveling paper and put it on the vat and all of this fun stuff. It's, it was annoying, but you don't have to do this. You can re-level it, but it comes ready to go out of box. And if you guys aren't familiar with resin printers, this is what they look like. You have your vat down here, you have your build plate right here, and this is just a very, very nice quality resin printer. Um, I've used quite a few over the past six or seven years, and I am very excited to actually start using this one. I've already seen reviews on it. I already have friends who are using this thing, and it's a really awesome printer. It comes pre-leveled, it comes with auto, oh my God, the amount of features that this thing has. You know what, let's just start from the top. Now, these are a lot of very specific specifications, and I, I'm not gonna memorize all these. They'll be on the screen as I read them. I have them wrote down here. The build volume, what you can actually get out of this printer is 223 by 126 by 230 millimeters, or for those in uh, freedom units, it is about nine inches by five inches by nine inches. That's gonna be your max build volume actually out of the resin vat and the build plate. It has high speed resin printing, 170 millimeters per hour, where um, the old resin printers I was using, like the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro was printing at 30 to 50 millimeters per hour. Uh, and this is just so much quicker, especially with high speed resin that lets you actually maximize the print speed on it. Yes, there are things like high speed resin, HD resin. This is high definition resin. I don't think this is high speed. I don't think they, I don't think they send me high speed. It's fine. Normal resin works too. It just can't print at that absolute max quality. Also when printing, you can get a 0 .0, 0 0.0.1 millimeter layer height. That is very, 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 very small. That is amazing and we'll be able to see that quality on some of the prints. I will actually have some resin prints to compare to some FDM prints. Maybe I'll try to get my macro lens out or micro lens, whatever it is, and zoom in and look at it. It has a 14K screen. Some of my other resin printers from one, two, three years ago were boasting 4K, 6K, 8K. This is a 14K screen. It is, um, that for anybody wondering, that is 13,320 by 5,120. That's a lot of pixels. It has an auto adaptive heating system that actually heats the resin vat. And if you are familiar with resin printing, you know why this is so important. If the room gets really cold, then the resin is going to get cold and it can really affect the print. You can actually see changes in the strength, the quality, and even the color of the resin as you're printing. So the heated vat actually helps prevent that and keeps the resin the same temperature. It also, and probably the coolest feature that is coming out on a lot of resin printers nowadays is an auto refill system. Now I don't have it hooked up yet. I'm not going to hook it up in here. While I'm printing with this, it's gonna go into the garage, but it has a really cool little, I think it's a uh, systolic pump where the, the fluid actually doesn't hit the pump. I think they use it for like dialysis. Um, but this goes into the top of the bottle. Most resin bottles are like the same, even through manufacturers. And even if that's not the case, if you're not using any cubics resin, just save an empty bottle. And if you get resin that isn't the same screw cap, just pour it in. And then you can actually just plug this in. And I think this plugs in right here. Yep and it auto refills. It'll load up the resin vat or you can pour the resin in and then hook up another bottle and it'll keep the resin vat level while you're printing. So if you, cause if you run out of resin, 
the printer doesn't typically know. This printer knows, this resin printer knows, but in other resin printers, if you run out of resin, the print keeps going. It doesn't, it doesn't know. You'll come back to half of a resin print and there's no saving that. And the last two things, there is an app for that. It is app controlled, it has Wi-Fi. you can send prints remotely from your computer. Most printers have that now, especially FDM printers, and it's cool to see that resin printers now have that as well. And on the back here or the side, wherever it is, I think it's the back, here it is. I'm gonna turn this thing around. There is a little port here for um, uh, optional ventilation. So you can take this off, buy a ventilation kit, and run a vent hose out through a window or a door. This will not completely eliminate the fumes and the smell of the resin, but it helps. And if you are going to be resin printing, do your research on the fumes. This stuff is toxic, it is resin. There's warnings on it and stuff and everything. You're not gonna wanna put this in your bedroom or your house. It will stink up the place. But with the ventilation systems and carbon filters and all of that, you can really cut down on that. So if you have it in a workspace or office, it might not be the worst thing in the world. Don't put it next to your baby's crib. Now, setting this up out of box, super easy. It was literally just this. It comes pre-leveled. Once you turn on the screen and power it up, oops, I don't know what I just hit. Um, once you turn it on, power it up, it's gonna tell you, hey, do this, install this, install that, install this, uh, install the app, and then you can actually go and put in your first resin and send your first prints. There are a couple test prints that we're gonna send off of it, and then I'm going to go and slice my own prints, send it, and then we're gonna go and just review how they came out. Did I need to re-level this? while I was printing. Did all of the prints come out fine? We're gonna probably clear the SD card or the, the USB. We'll do all of the stock prints and then I'll start throwing some of my own prints at it and just see the experience. What's nice about resin printers is there's not a lot of moving parts. Once you get them dialed in and once you figure out your slicing settings with the, like, the resin supports and all that, it's kind of just fire and forget. The hardest part about resin printing is just the cleanup, taking the vat off, washing everything, breaking off the supports. Oh my God, you had a spill. That's the worst part of resin printing. But printers like this are trying to make that easier. It, it comes out of box ready to go and we're about to go test that. So uh, yeah, cue the really cool time lapse of me pouring resin and sending prints. And then next time you see me, I'll have a cavalcade of resin prints to review and we'll talk about if this thing was easy to use or not. Let's get started. Okay, so getting time lapse of resin printing is kind of tricky. Uh, my camera overheated like twice from leaving it on too long, and then I just had a lot of other stuff going on. But hey, it prints. So after I got everything set up, I was just firing off prints. It has a couple test prints in it. However, that's when some of my um, problems started. There's like a test sphere thing, and it just unadhered, and it's meant to be a test, quality test. And uh, I tried to print it twice and it came off the build plate both times. So I was able to pop it back up, or not the build plate, the FEP, and then I was able to do a max height test and this came out actually really great. I'm not really sure what it is. I think it is just to show off the detail and it looks really cool. Then I ran this exposure test thing. Um, not familiar enough with resin printers to really diagnose and talk about like the differences here. Um, there's definitely some differences in some of them and one of them just didn't print at all even though there was supposed to be eight. One was just completely missing and stuck to the FEP but the other seven printed so that was weird. So then I started to detect some type of leveling issue or maybe it just wasn't adhering properly. So that's when I took the little cheat shortcut and I sanded the bed. This is a little trick I picked up in resin printing over the past couple years. Um, some re uh, build plates, some of them are completely smooth and flat. Some have these new textures on them. You can kind of see the little pattern there. Yeah, I just took some high grit sandpaper and scuffed and sanded it. And that pretty much cured all my adhesion problems. Was this the proper thing to do? I have no idea. Did it work? mostly. The next thing I sent was a little arc reactor. I love printing this Mark 50 arc reactor. It is a very high detail piece and it is just, it just really shows the quality of a good resin printer and everything fits in here nicely. And I actually left the supports on for a reason and they, uh, they came right off. I've never used any Cubix uh, slicing program, the one that's provided with the printer. And as far as support generation goes, um, it's been doing better than Chidu Box. We'll look at these Luffy statues here in a minute, but the support placement on here, no failed pieces. Everything's been coming off really nice with just the auto-generate supports. I, I have no notes. I don't have to, I, I don't have to sit there and manually add any supports. And everything's coming out great. Then I got a little bold and wanted to send an Iron Man faceplate and an Iron Man gauntlet. Now the Iron Man gauntlet, 
uh, cover, hand top cover, Mark 85 thing. Um, I forgot how big this was at 100% scale. DO3D, what are you doing? Anyway, this came out beautiful. The, the quality and finish on this is great. There is one weird line through it. Not sure why that happened, but that would sand right out with resin. And yeah, this came out this came out really good. And then I tried to send an Iron Man faceplate and unfortunately I ran into another adhesion problem. Um, that print did fail and pop off. It got, it didn't get that far. Um, I cleaned the bed, I sanded it a little bit more and then this one came out fine. And it really shows the detail in there beautifully. That's why I printed this. Um, this is the Iron Man Prime from Walsh 3D. And like it, this is, this is what resin printers are for. This is just gorgeous. And then I went on one last slicing binge and I sliced three different Straw Hat Luffy statues. I think I found these on Maker World. I just typed in Luffy and it is a very high quality resin print. And uh, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna peel these off. Here, a little some of the AMS, AMSR for you. ASMR, AMSR, ASMR. Like looking at this model, I mean, his stomach, the abs, the details on his jacket, the buttons, even his hair, there is no missing piece of this. Like the, all the support generation, all the auto support generation came out flawless. This is, this is awesome. And then I just printed him at two different size uh, or three different size scales. I just shrank him down. Maybe I shrank him up. Did I increase him? I don't know what the scale model was, but you know, three different pieces and all three of them look pretty much the same. And the last thing is probably my favorite. It is a Labubu Gear 5 Luffy. A Lafufu? Lafubu? Fubufu. Leave a comment down below on what the hell this thing is called. But it is so cute. I am a sucker for Gear 5. It is literally, I don't know where my phone is. It's the back of my phone and I have a Gear 5 tattoo. Anyway, this thing is adorable. This might be the first um, statue resin print I actually print because I'm not, I'm, or actually paint because I'm not painting any of these. But this little guy, this little guy. Um, something weird happened with it. All the others cured and dried fine, but this one just didn't. It has a weird surface texture on it. I don't know if like, I don't know if it was the resin, but this is the only one that came out not as smooth as the rest. Maybe I over cured it or under cured it. Um, it's not too bad. It's still cute. I'm probably going to go and reprint this thing a little bit bigger. I think I would like a larger size, but this printer has a decent build volume. So that's an option. Okay. So some closing thoughts about this printer. Do I recommend it? Do I not? Um, Honestly, yeah, this is a really good resin printer. It was easy to set up out of box. It didn't take long. Uh, with all the features that these printers are coming with now, resin printing is getting easier and easier. And honestly, it's been pretty easy the whole time, I think. The hardest part for me about resin printing is support placement and generation and figuring out the proper way to position things because it's very different than how you do plastic FDM printing. But once you figure it out and kind of start to dial it in, it prints. Um, the failures I was having was absolutely from adhesion. Um, if, if the first layer failed every single time, that's a leveling problem or something. These were just adhesion problems and I was able to solve those. And that's kind of, that's kind of on par with resin printing. And once you get more and more familiar with that and more familiar with the particular machine you're using, you'll be able to tease those out a lot more uh, reliably. As far as the quality goes, like I said, these look incredible. This makes me want to keep resin printing things. And that's the point that's what a, a, a machine like this should do. It shouldn't deter you from wanting to 3D print something, make something. Once I got it dialed in and just sanded the bed and got that adhesion back up, everything's been printing fine. So now I have a good, reliable resin printer to start working into my you know, workflow and arsenal now, which I'm really excited about. You will start seeing this printer appear in future videos because I just, I, I like a resin printer that works. Um, like the new Iron Man suit, I'm doing a lot of little details for it. And when I start redoing my Mark 85 and a lot of other cool upcoming projects. So I'm very happy to have a reliable resin printer back on my workbench. Um, and you will just, yeah, stay tuned for more involving this thing. And I wanna thank Anycubic again for sending me this machine, allowing me to test this out and providing the materials. It's been a really fun experience. And if you guys are looking for a good size, mid-size resin 3D printer, yeah, this M7 is absolutely an option and I would absolutely recommend it. But please let me know what you guys think. So if you have any comments, questions, concerns about anything you saw in the video, please leave some comments down below. I read all of them and I will do my best to respond to as many as possible. But I think that's gonna wrap up this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day.